Gemma, Gemma's dad, Gemma's dad's girlfriend, Tiff, Rob, Rob's mom, Rob's dad, wait, wait, wait. Thanks, thanks, Duda. Lene, Kevin and Keisha's mom, and everything involving her, Trig and his girlfriend, Bakari and that goddamn book, the writers, the producers, the showrunners, all of that. If you want to make The Shy a better show, this is a list of the things you would need to get rid of in order to make that work. <sighs> Let's get to it. Hello YouTube, I am Dreadlock Samurai, and today we will be reviewing the last two episodes of The Shy, which is episode 613 and 612. So this won't be a play-by-play, -play. this will just be key things I want to talk about in regards to those episodes. Things that stood out, things that were stupid, things that were terrible which is a lot of things, but we'll only get to the most important things. The first thing I want to point out is episode season six, episode 12 started out with Tiff setting up her weed dispensary, you know, blunt selling, you know, operation in the club of Duda's girlfriend. And Duda happens to be there. And Tiff proceeds to talk to this man like he ain't the biggest gangster in Chicago. And two things. The first thing is, how the fuck dumb are you? You don't want him to kill your boyfriend. You don't want him to kill your baby daddy. You definitely don't want him to kill you. But yet you talk to this man like he don't have the capacity to do so. Low difficulty. Little to none. And then you proceed to fuck up the relationship of the woman that gave you the opportunity to be something more than a bitter baby mom and a bad character. What the fuck is that? I really hate Tiff's character. Not as much as I hate Gemma's, but it's a close, it's a close, it's a close race. Those have to be the two worst written characters, black women, in television history. Like, I'm talking about these women are written worse than, like, Tubi movies. Like, at this point, this show should be a Tubi special. But I guess when Showtime doesn't have anything to air, we get the shot. So let, let's let's move on. Next up, <laughs> Papa and uh, the preacher guy. The first thing I want to know: what the fuck is Papa's real name? Papa can't be his name. We six seasons in, and I don't know his name. But anywho. It's like the older he gets, the worse his acting be becomes. It's the wildest shit ever. Like, how does your acting get worse with more experience? But anywho, I don't get the arc. He's, instead of him following his father's path, he chooses to follow the path of the person his father hated. And given how bad every storyline in this show is, the pastor has to be one of the most entertaining parts of this season. He's actually pretty entertaining. I hate those stupid fucking glasses that he chooses to wear in every fucking episode, but... I mean, people might say that about my glasses. But anywho, I hate those fucking glasses. But he is an interesting character, and I'm not interested in Papa's growth in that. I am interested in his... arc. Especially with him being tied to and connected to Duda now that we know. Okay, Keisha. Let's get to Keisha and her arc. 
Now, on top of the fact that they completely and totally ruined Keisha's character, and they're using her character to undermine Emmett's character even further, her baby's sick. Now, mind you, while just throwing shit at the wall, her baby's sick. Come to find out that the baby has sickle cell. So she tracks down her uh, abductor slash baby daddy DNA only to find out that he isn't the father. It's Nook, which is dude's bodyguard. And I'm going to be honest, yo, fuck that shit. It's like they make all these twists and turns that be so fucking underwhelming to, to give the show some expense, some suspense. That shit is just annoying. I don't give a fuck. Like, shout out to the people who suffer from sickle cell anemia. That is a big deal. That is a horrific disease that I, you know, a couple of my relatives, two of my cousins suffer from. And I see how destructive that that disease is. Of course, that needs to be highlighted and shined upon. But when you have a show that's already convoluted in storytelling and, and, and don't know which direction you want to go, you don't have to keep just throwing shit onto each and every character to add more drama and more suspense about what can happen and what can happen and what can happen and who's our baby daddy. Because the sickle cell anemia wasn't the highlight the abductor not being her baby daddy was that is what i have the issue with that shit is stupid like if you want to highlight sickle cell anemia highlight it but stop using it to further a storyline that didn't need to be told because let's be real up until these two episodes she didn't even brought up the fact that the baby and the abductor and the genetic, none of that was brought up. And Miss Ray isn't a kid. And with that, she furthers undermines Emmett in her life by bringing it to Nuck. Nuck shitting on Emmett. And I just hate the fact that they turn Emmett's character into what it is. Like, I root for Emmett, especially when I kind of thought that his arc would be him becoming more like Duda, him kind of taking some of his power back that they they constantly take from him throughout the, you know, the run of the show. I was rooting for Emmett. I'm not still root for Emmett. Uh, but the way they go about it is so... His... Not even his storyline. This show is ass, man. God damn. And I'm reviewing. And I'm reviewing it because I am passionate about how bad this show is. And hopefully somebody that writes on this show or produces the fucking show hears this. Or hear not me. It don't gotta be me. Somebody, Hopefully somebody connected to this show hears the real critique of the show. Like an honest critique. Not one of these people that don't know good acting or good television or good storytelling. But anywho, let me get off this rant. Um, they're trying to further Jake fucking on a pastor's wife. Pointless storytelling. We don't need that. Gemma and her entire arc with Brittany and Jake, to be honest, should go. At this point, Jake and Papa can go. Their roles in this show serve absolutely no role they should have went to la with kev because yuck victor victor is the definition of lost potential so long story short a car was crushed burned thrown in a lake and after all of that victor's dna still happened to be on the car or in the car not Dudas, the person who owned the car. But Victor, Trig. And Trig is so. Trig is a wasted character. 
when we were introduced to Trig, he had Duda spooked. And now all of a sudden, every time him and Duda are in the same scene, he spooked. They kind of made him out to be this, like, legendary hood killer type motherfucker. But, oh my God, where have that, where, where has that gone? Yuck. So, long story short, he get arrested for the DNA. Duda bonds him out, tells him to keep his mouth shut, uses, drops the money off to Jake, and then complains that he's bonded out of jail. You clearly don't want to be in jail. But then you get bonded out. Now, let's get to my favorite character of the show, Duda. So, throughout these two episodes, they have been kind of setting Duda up. They Everybody wants to kill Duda. So, it's like random motherfuckers just going up to Duda making threats. Ooh, don't touch my family. Stay away from my family. Ooh, mind you, Duda is the person that runs Chicago. So, Rob's dad, who, another character they should get rid of because who gives a fuck about that character? Absolutely nobody but Tiff. But Rob's dad, who's Victor's lawyer, pops up on Duda sporadically, which is how the fuck did you know where this man was to say, hey, don't fuck with my family. And then that moment when Duda smiled and just kept minding his business, I knew that he wasn't long for this show. And... You see, I crossed him off of my list. Dead as hell. Dead as hell. And I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if Victor goes to jail for the murders. Because Victor was an accomplice. And none of this would happen if Victor would be the killer that the Shy has told us he's been in his past life. The shit is all over the place. Rob's dad is dead. One character that they don't have to keep trying to give time to. Oh my god, this shit is fucking... T- <laughs> and last but not least, Bakari. So, these last two episodes, Bakari has been trying to write a book about his life. Now, if you're going to write a book, of course, don't name names. Don't, you know, uh, incriminate yourself or anybody in the organization you're connected to. But long story short, don't write a book if you still work in the criminal organization. And don't tell anybody that you're writing a book about your criminal organization. So the last two episodes, the issue is his sister snitched to Duda about him writing a book and in him writing a book, the whole thing starts with him needing a laptop. Now, what the fuck do you do in a criminal organization? Which means if you're a criminal, you should have money. At least enough money to buy yourself a laptop. But these last two episodes is about him trying to get a laptop. Dude is aware that he's writing a book. Dude is pissed. Dude don't want to give him his allowance, which you work for a criminal organization, but you get an allowance. You don't get paid. I'm not a criminal, so I don't know how that work. But anywho, his story arc is him been needing a laptop to write his memoir memoirs he used the typewriter took it to the teacher the teacher was impressed but not impressed and gave him a laptop now given the fact that he know his boss is upset about the fact that he is writing a book about his criminal life his boss is aware that he needs a laptop so at Duda's birthday party, Bakari takes the laptop to Duda's party, sits it on his lap, and proceeds to talk shit to Duda. 
And the first thing Duda thinks to do, which was the smartest thing to do, is break the fucking laptop. Because you know that your boss doesn't want you to write a fucking book. He, You know that your boss doesn't want you to have a laptop for said book. And the first thing you do when you get a laptop is take it to the boss's birthday party. And then proceed to talk shit. If you, first things first, take the fucking laptop home. You have a house outside of working for Duda. You live with Papa. Or two, if you're going to take the laptop with you, put it in a book bag or something that's discreet that won't draw attention to Duda. And the biggest part of it all, if the laptop is sitting on your lap and you're at your boss's birthday party, don't talk shit to the boss, which would make the boss pay attention to you and said laptop and he'll... Motherfuck, who wrote this shit? It's like y'all write shows for people that don't know good TV, don't know good acting, and and Candy falling in love with Dom's cousin. Like, who the fuck cares? Like, bro, pointless storytelling. Don't nobody give a fuck about Candy's character. Don't nobody give a fuck about her trying to fuck on Dom's cousin. I get that y'all are trying to show and give representation, but there is a way to fucking do so. This isn't the way. Cramming pointless characters in the show that's already convoluted is dumb. And P.S. Why the fuck bring Lala back? She's been missing for most of the fucking season. All of the season. But I guess you want her to fall in love with Vic Mason's car. Oh, fuck. I hate the show, y'all. And I'm going to be real. I can't wait till they cancel this shit because it deserves to be canceled. Six seasons was generous as fuck. But anywho, this show is ass. These two episodes were ass. And thank God the Power Book 2 is out. <sighs> I'll see y'all in a minute because I'm about to review that. And I needed that to wash out the bad taste that this show left in my mouth. This show is ass. Like, I don't recommend... This shit is garbage. And everybody to work on a show, you gotta be ass at your job, too. Because, god damn. Yuck. Huh, but I'm done. I am Dreadlock Samurai. Like, subscribe to my channel. Show me some love. Comment. Let me know what you thought about these last two trash ass episodes. Subscribe. And follow me on TikTok. You know, I'll be streaming and shit. Fuck with me when I'm in my element. Y'all can see me every day. And I'm a handsome motherfucker. Y'all show me some love. Come follow me on TikTok at Dreadlock Samurai. Follow me on Twitch at Dreadlock Samurai 4. It's a little cartoon icon with Dreadlock Samurai. It's another motherfucker still in my name. But anywho, I'm the Dreadlock Samurai that matter. Follow me, like, subscribe, show me some love. We out.